The final item of business today is the Member's Business Debate on Motion Number 11082 in the name of Paul Martin on creating jobs in Glasgow's East End. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would be grateful if those members who wish to participate could press the request to speak buttons now, please. I call on Paul Martin to open the debate. Seven minutes, please, Mr Martin. Uh, thank you, uh, President Austin. And can I uh, first of all take this opportunity to thank colleagues from across the uh, parties for supporting the business motion uh, in my name? And can I say that I am also aware that many of the members here this evening will be familiar with the Glasgow Fort. And can I advise members that seven days till Christmas, uh, seven days left, and I know there are many bargains to be had at the Glasgow Fort Junction 10 of the M8. So take advantage of that this evening on your way home. Uh, by way of background, the Fort Shopping Centre uh, provides over 2,500 jobs. Uh, it is located in the Easter House of my area, uh, the constituency that I represent, Glasgow Province. Uh, and members may be aware of some of the background and the challenges that face uh, the East End of Glasgow, and in particular uh, Easter House, in respect of the various levels of con high concentration of unemployment. Uh, recently, it has been announced that Mark Spencer's uh, will build an extension to the existing facility at the Glasgow Fort, which will see another 500 jobs to the existing 2,500 jobs that currently exist. Because I know, so like the whole community, and I'm sure every member in this chamber will agree with me, uh, this extension is welcomed in an area of uh, high unemployment. But I need to say at the same time uh, that we have to ensure that this investment benefits those who live in the locality of uh, the Glasgow Fort. Uh, and I was compelled to submit this motion today uh, after I had a conversation with a young man who lives directly across from uh, the Glasgow Fort uh, and he welcomed the expansion of this new facility uh, but advised me that he's been facing a number of difficulties in respect of securing permanent employment uh, since leaving college. But most importantly, he advised me that he wanted to work. Uh, when I had a discussion with him and concerning the new jobs that were coming to the Glasgow Fort, he advised me that due to the gaps in the CV uh, and some of the challenges that he faced in the creation of a CV, CV for example, and the gaps in uh, some of the other elements of his employment history, he didn't feel that he would be given the opportunity for those jobs that existed in the expansion of the Glasgow Fort. Presiding officer, I find that unacceptable. Uh, this young man uh, and other uh, young people in East House and other, and other people who want to take up on these opportunities should be given the opportunity to take up in these employment opportunities that exist in the local area. Uh, simply put, in my terms, I would say that it's not lack of aspiration to work, it's the lack of opportunity. Uh, and we in this Parliament have a responsibility and we have the powers available to us to take action in that respect. Uh, and there are many others, unfortunately, within my constituency and other parts of Glasgow and beyond who find themselves in such a similar position. And we have a responsibility to reverse this trend. I think it's important to, as I've said, as a local member, to recognise and welcome this investment. But we need to take action and look at how we can uh, reverse this trend, as I've already said. I've already written to the Chief Executive of Mark Suspensers and I've been called on him to employ local job seekers and to work with the Council's uh, local authority, the Glasgow uh, Jobs and Business organisation, to look at how we can employ, uh, how we can support those who wish to gain employment in the Glasgow Fort. I've got to say I've wel I welcome the positive reply that I've already received from the Chief Executive of Mark Suspensers, and I look forward to meeting with them in the new year to discuss how we can take <coughs> forward various initiatives to ensure the local people are given the opportunities that they deserve. I would also like Mark Spencers to follow the lead of Tesco, one of the rivals whom I worked with when I represented uh, Springburn, uh, where we formed the St Rocks Initiative, where we ensured that 450 people who lived locally in Springburn were employed in the new St Rocks Initiative in Tesco and Springburn. And many of those people still work in uh, that St Rocks Initiative, that, that St Rocks store in Springburn. And many of them, and I can cite one example of one gentleman who hadn't worked for 25 years, who was able to secure employment 
in the St Rolex initiative and the St Rolex store in Springburn because of the initiative that was put in place to ensure that he was given the support that he deserved to be able to take up in that employment. Saying officer, my main ask of the Scottish Government this evening is to look at how they can encourage employers to take to ensure that we employ locally and also to put in place the necessary resources to ensure that, that can be taken forward. As I've already set out, there are a number of very complex reasons why individuals are not able to gain this employment. I think it's our responsibility in here to take that forward. Presenting officer, in conclusion, I would say unemployment is unacceptable. Uh, I think everyone in this chamber is united in dealing with that. Its costs, uh, the economy and the challenges that we face in the economy is unacceptable. It's something that I think all of us in this chamber want to take action on. But here is a specific example I'd put in place of the best practice of example for the St Rocks Initiative where we ensure that people are prepared to apply for these posts that will become available. Uh, and I also say in conclusion, I welcome uh, this £45 million investment uh, in the local area in respect of the expansion and the kind of investment we've seen in that area. And I look very forward to working with the Scottish Government, hopefully, uh, and with the local employers to ensure that we make a difference and that people can be given a genuine opportunity to be employed uh, in the locality. Thank you very much, President. Thank you very much. I now call John Mason to be followed by Patricia Ferguson's speeches of around four minutes or so. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and uh, thank you also to Paul Martin uh, for bringing this motion today. Uh, as he obviously realises, the fort is not currently in my constituency, uh, but once upon a time it was uh, when I represented Glasgow East at Westminster. And in fact, I have to say the fort holds a very special place in my memory from the summer of 2008, uh, when both the main parties did quite a lot of campaigning there uh, around the by-election. And especially I remember the morning of Friday the 25th of July 2008, uh, when we met there with the media uh, to celebrate the SNP winning uh, that particular by-election. I have seen the fort develop over the years, uh, from the early days when I remember that even some local people did not like the name because they felt it was overly warlike and was not good uh, for the Easter House area. But we seem to go over, have got over that problem. Uh, I think being on the motorway into and out of Glasgow has been an advantage for Easter House, uh, certainly in having this development in its location, and I think Easter House, to some extent, has benefited from the location in comparison with some of Glasgow's other post-war peripheral housing schemes, like Drum Chapel or Castle Milk. Easter House is now very much at the centre of things. From the beginning, there were delays in attracting some kind of leisure facility to the fort, although that had been a commitment right at the beginning from both the developers and the City Council. However, I have to say I'm glad now uh, that we have the View Cinema and a, a whole range of eating places there, uh, as well as purely the shopping experience. I think from the early days there was a realisation that many of the shoppers would come uh, from a distance, would use their cars and would use the motorway. Uh, however, I think there's also been a commitment that there should be as many local jobs as possible for local people. And I think to be fair to the fort as a whole, it, it presumably varies slightly from employer to employer, uh, but there, there has been a serious effort made to do this, uh, and I understand that is the case, as Paul Martin has eloquently said, uh, for the present uh, expansion. I have to say one of the reasons uh, I enjoyed using the fort at first uh, was that it had a really good bookshop in the shape of Borders, uh, which of course is no longer there. And I think the story of Borders uh, is something uh, of a picture of the retail sector and also, frankly, of the jobs that can go with it. Uh, when I was younger uh, in Glasgow, the place to buy your books was John Smith's in St Vincent Street, and I suspect other members uh, may remember it as well. However, Borders and the other big chains came into Glasgow, both in the city centre and at uh, out-of-town sh shopping centres like the fort, and John Smith got squeezed out, uh, as did many smaller shops. And then, of course, over time, Borders has been squeezed out by the likes of Amazon. Now, my memory of Borders is that it had a name, as well as being a good bookshop, of being somewhat poor employer and very much anti-trade union. All of which raises the questions of some jobs being better than other jobs and some employers being better than others. I do very much welcome the expansion of the fort and the new jobs that come alongside. But are they really new jobs? Or are they effectively a transfer of jobs from smaller shops 
which have been squeezed out by the big chains who inhabit retail parks. Well, I, I guess, frankly, it's a mixture of both. People do not have a lot of extra money these days to spend, so they can only spend each pound once in one shop. But on the other hand, hopefully people are being attracted to Glasgow from other parts of Scotland and beyond, and the actual number of retail sales is increasing. Now, the motion men mentions the wider East End, and I think there's a lot to welcome in the East End this year, not least with the Commonwealth Games, which brought both temporary and permanent jobs. Uh, Clyde Gateway doing a great work with uh, regeneration and the new police building uh, down at Dunmarnock, uh, which will increase footfall, even though many of the jobs are transferring, and that will have an on effect. But to finish with the fort, uh, I do hope uh, to be there actually tomorrow evening, uh, Mr Martin, rather than uh, this evening, because uh, I hope to take part in carol singing at Morrison's. And uh, I'm sure uh, Mr Martin and uh, yourself, presiding officer, and any other members would be very welcome to take part in that as well, if they would like to do so. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I now call on Patricia Ferguson. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and may I congratulate my colleague Paul Martin for securing this very worthwhile and important debate this evening. And the motion is, of course, about creating jobs in Glasgow's East End, but the Presiding Officer will, I'm sure, appreciate that a constituency like mine stretches from the northwest of the city to the east. And in fact, at several points, Mr Martin's constituency and mine run along opposite sides of the same road. In any case, a job located in the east end of the city may, on occasion at least, um, with all due respect to Mr Martin, be an opportunity for someone in the neighbouring constituencies too. And Paul Martin rightly identifies the good practice that Tesco demonstrated when it opened its superstore at St Rollux, which is now in my constituency following the boundary changes in 2011. Working with local partners, including the much-missed Glasgow North Regeneration Agency, under the guidance of its excellent Chief Executive, Cathy Lang, and Tesco at that time went out of their way to prepare and recruit local people for their new store. Even those who were not fortunate enough to be employed by Tesco had the opportunity to learn the basic skill skills needed in the world at work. And I have, over the years, spoken to a number of people who used that experience and successfully found employment elsewhere. Learning from the experience that Paul Martin described to me from his knowledge of what happened at St Rollocks, I was particularly keen to make sure that a similar programme was operated by Tesco when they enlarged their store in Mary Hill. And I'm pleased that they did decide to operate a similar scheme there, providing pre-interview training and assistance with issues like CV preparation, for example. So local jobs for local people is what we are really talking about because the constituencies Paul Martin and myself have the privilege to represent contain, I would argue, the best people and the most vibrant communities. But they also have some of the highest levels of deprivation in the country, something that disturbs me greatly and is what motivated me to become involved in politics in the first place. So Paul Martin is absolutely right, presiding officer, when he says that large developments in the east end of the city must also be opportunities for local people and that all agencies and organisations must come together to create more jobs and apprenticeships. And in my own constituency, we hope to see soon a major retail facility built on the site of the former North British Locomotive Works at Carlisle Street in Springburn. This site was cleared in the 1960s and has stood deserted ever since. And the proposals put forward by Forge Properties could spur further regeneration in the area and, crucially, provide food shopping, our food shopping hub, in fact, in an area sadly lacking in that kind of possibility. New roads and other infrastructure would, of course, follow, and some 611 jobs are likely to be created. I and the local councillors for the area, Chris Kelly and Helen Stephen, want to work with the developer to ensure the jobs go to the people in our community and those in the neighbouring areas, both during the construction phase and when the centre opens. And we will do everything in our power to make that happen. But we need to ensure that all other agencies are also partners in that work. And I would particularly mention Jobs and Business Glasgow in that regard. So my congratulations to Paul Martin, and I sincerely hope that his hard work pays off for his constituents in relation to Glasgow Fort, as well as his previous efforts at St Rollocks and Springburn did for his constituents then. Thank you. Many thanks.
And can I now invite uh, Annabel Ewing to respond to the debate, Minister, around seven minutes or so, please. Hey, thank you, Presiding Officer, and I uh, congratulate uh, Paul Martin on securing this member's debate tonight. Uh, and indeed his entreaty for some last minute um, Christmas shopping will be noted in the record of the debate this evening and hopefully will be poured over uh, avidly tomorrow by our fellow colleagues who might be tempted uh, to proceed directly to the fort to get their last minute Christmas presents. Uh, but I welcome uh, the expansion of the fort shopping centre in the east end of Glasgow and in particular the opportunities for job seekers that the expansion will create. And I would also thank the, the member for Glasgow Proven for highlighting the hugely important issue of job creation and therefore of apprenticeship opportunities, uh, points indeed taken up by John Mason and by Patricia uh, Ferguson. And I would like to focus, presiding officer, on a number of uh, issues here of, of relevance. Uh, as far as uh, skills training and access to the jobs market is concerned, it is worth noting that the most recent UK Commission for Employment and Skills survey outlines a number of key strengths for skills and training in Scotland, including uh, positive feedback on the work readiness of our young people. The survey found young people in Scotland are the best prepared for work in the UK and that there is also an improving uh, situation on skills gaps. However, we want more firms to play a part in supporting our people towards fair and sustainable employment and our efforts to achieve this will be stepped up further in the coming year in the context, context of our refreshed youth employment strategy. Certainly. Patricia Ferguson. I do, Presiding Officer, appreciate all efforts to encourage young people and to support young people into employment, but the kind of people that have particularly benefited from the initiatives that Tesco have so far taken forward are those people who have perhaps been out of the job market for a long time and who struggle with issues of confidence and skills, and those are the people who are probably hardest to reach, to use a cliched phrase, but most genuinely in need of, of that kind of support. Minister? Yes, I thank Patricia Ferguson for her, for her comment, which is a fair comment to make. And indeed, uh, there is a recognition that there are a number of people further away from the jobs market, and those people do need support. And our refreshed youth employment strategy is absolutely uh, uh, intended to provide uh, the support needed to ensure that all people have an opportunity, all young people have an opportunity to get into the workplace. Um, as far as um, Skills Development Scotland is concerned, um, it has been working with the Scottish Funding Council, local authorities and others to develop regional skills assessments and this work will help improve the understanding of the skills and labour market demands across Scotland. And last month, uh, SDS published a series of 11 regional skills assessments covering the length and breadth of Scotland, including Glasgow Region and Glasgow and Clyde Valley. The collaborative approach employed in the development of these assessments reiterates the Scottish Government's commitment to work with our employers to ensure that our skills and education system are closely aligned with economic opportunities. Um, the Commonwealth Games was mentioned, the legacy, and that I believe is also of, of relevance, presiding officer. Uh, and members will be aware, of course, indeed, that the Scottish Government and its uh, key partners began planning a legacy uh, fit uh, uh, for the, the Commonwealth Games back in 2008. And central to these plans were our ambitions and those of our partners to increase movement for Scottish people into employment, training and volunteering, increasing the growth rate of Scottish businesses and helping Scotland to attract new business investments. Uh, as part of these uh, ambitions, the Scottish Government has provided £125 million to Clyde Gateway since 2007, helping to remediate land, create office and industrial space, attract inward investment and generate job opportunities in the east end of Glasgow. In addition to this, the £500 million spent on the construction and refurbishment of games venues and the Athletes' Village in the east end of Glasgow over the six years leading to 2014 has on average supported 1,000 jobs and contributed £52 million to Scotland's GVA in each year. Furthermore, 500 jobs were provided for the long-term unemployed and education leavers on Commonwealth Games infrastructure-related contracts, including 168 apprenticeships, as well as providing opportunities for investment from local businesses and social enterprises. On uh, the issue of community benefit clauses, presiding officer, Clyde Gateway also seeks to support uh, local people to access the opportunities that regeneration of the area is in fact bringing. And community benefit clauses form a mandatory part in contracts being delivered by Clyde Gateway, providing jobs and training for local people. Where jobs cannot be provided due to the specialist nature of the work, alternative community benefits are indeed agreed with the contractor. In addition, it's worth noting that Clyde Gateway is delivering a range of employment and training projects to support people into work, 
many for the first time, and they have agreed a joint action plan with Skills Development Scotland to support the specific employability and training needs uh, in the area, perhaps therefore covering uh, uh, the concern that uh, Ms Ferguson had. Um, the Youth Employment Strategy Presiding Officer that I referred to a wee bit earlier, which we published on Monday, does indeed respond to the report by Sir Ian Wood and his Commission for Developing Scotland's Young Workforce. And we have set out in the debate we have just had this afternoon a very radical plan to offer young people the skills and knowledge that they need to move from education to the world of work. Uh, and I do agree with Paul Martin that we do indeed have each of us a responsibility as parliamentarians to do what we can with the powers that we have in the parliament to ensure that every young person has a chance to make their way in life. And that is uh, certainly a duty that I take very, very seriously indeed. The milestones over the next six years are very clear and they're also very ambitious and we have committed to taking action uh, needed to uh, uh, secure our very um, uh, ambitious target of reducing youth unemployment by 40% by 2021. Uh, the government has already committed £12 million this year uh, and £16.6 .6 million uh, is planned for the year 1516 to support and develop the plans outlined in the implementation plan. This funding demonstrates our commitment to ensuring that the resources are in place to make real our vision of a world-class vocational education system. We will improve the options for young people to help them get into sustainable jobs that will drive economic growth and so reduce youth unemployment to levels of the best performing countries in Europe. The programme aims to achieve systemic change across schools, across colleges, training provision and employers, uh, 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 underpinned by consistent and sustained support from this government. And these actions will sit alongside our existing successful actions to tackle youth unemployment, which include the Opportunities for All programme, a commitment to offer a place in education or training to 16 to 19 year olds who need it. And of course, our modern apprenticeship programme, where we are continuing to deliver 25,000 modern apprenticeship starts a year. And indeed, we plan to go further by increasing that target to 30,000 by 2020. Uh, Presiding officer, uh, I'm very pleased indeed uh, to have had the opportunity tonight to respond to, to Mr Martin's uh, debate. Uh, I would wish to stress that whilst much has been achieved and developments like the one highlighted at the fort are important to driving recovery, there is still a great deal to do. And the member can be assured that we will use every possible opportunity for government, for local government, businesses, employers, social enterprises, the third sector and the people of Scotland to work together to ensure we maximise job creation and apprenticeship opportunity in Glasgow's East End and indeed across Scotland. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you very much. And that concludes Paul Martin's debate creating jobs in Glasgow's East End. And I now close this meeting of Parliament.